if there's a mission in politics, my God, that's a great mission, isn't it? Indeed. And you're here tonight because you're part of that. We are very pleased to see that Lord Pendry and James Dudridge and Baroness Wormsley and others are going to come and go uh, as, as the evening goes on. So let us now hear from Tom Watson, um, the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party, Member of Parliament, but also someone whose life has been transformed. He's reversed his type 2 diabetes and he's going to tell us how he did it and what we have to do. Tom Watson, ladies and gentlemen. It is genuinely fantastic to uh, see you all, meet you all tonight. Uh, and in a week of chaos and misery, this is the only meeting that I've been looking forward to uh, thus far this week. And it is great to share a platform with Asim and Zoe and Trudy. Uh, and it is good to recognise so many faces in the audience. There are people here who have genuinely helped me on my own health journey. Michael Mosley over there was actually the start of my journey. I not only read his book when I was on a holiday, I read it on a Kindle, so then I read all the footnotes. And then I read a Seam's book. I've actually got Zoe's book for Christmas. Uh, and it's helped me. And Keith, you talk about your bad food habits. You can have, on my diet, you can have chocolate, provided it is 80% plus cocoa. You can have curry, chicken curry, provided it is cooked in ghee or butter. Uh, I would rather you have cauliflower rice with it rather than rice. Uh, I'm not sure about the tea, but obviously, why would you want tea when you can drink bulletproof coffee? Which is very good <laughs> if you choose to uh, fast intermittently or do time restricted eating. And that's really what I wanted to talk about. You don't really need to hear my personal journey because you can read it in the Daily Express online every two weeks because they write the story over and over again. Um, but I do, where, where it might intersect with public policy and what needs to change is where I think we need to be tonight. So I will briefly talk and then I think we should genuinely hear from the experts. I, I'm a classic case really. I was a busy guy with a busy life who didn't really think much about nutrition, piled on the weight through my mid-twenties, thirties, forties, uh, developed hypertension, didn't think much about it and then hit type 2 diabetes and then for a period of time went into complete denial about it uh, and took these things called metformin and various other things that I didn't really think much about either. I just became medicalized in the system without necessarily thinking about any of the consequences because uh, I was going to live forever. And there comes a point in life where that has to end. Uh, and for me, uh, it ended uh, uh, having, re having read into the subject and realising that the advice the government were given me might not necessarily work for me. Uh, and of course that's quite difficult when you're a policy maker, when you have to be responsible, when you have to give correct advice to people on public service broadcasting and I, and I was quite troubled by it and challenged by it when I went on my, when I started my own journey. Uh, and that's why I've not really spoken about this. I think I put my type 2 into reverse remission. We can talk about the lexicon of uh, how you describe it. Um, I think I probably turned it around in about six weeks flat. Uh, but I left it a year of testing my HA1Cs or uh, uh, doing my sort of daily fasting blood glucose just to make sure that it wasn't an aberration and I did it uh, to start with by cutting out refined sugar in all its forms by cutting down the amount of carbs I take I'm sure everyone has had this debate and other than two or three days of what I would describe as flu-like symptoms which I now know was refined sugar withdrawal I just felt great and I woke up after about a week and a half and the usual routine I get, went through which was which of my joints ache the most today. I woke up one day and my joints weren't aching and I'd not gone to the loo in the middle of the night and I'd had a really good night's sleep and I woke up feeling relaxed and pretty good about myself. 
And people at work were commenting that I was looking a bit calmer uh, and a bit more chilled out. And I'm getting more chilled out by the week. And we're in the middle of the biggest national crisis <laughs> facing the country since the Second World War. My party is on the verge of civil war and collapse. Everyone is losing their heads. And I almost could get excited about it, but not quite because I'm so chilled out. And that's basically because I've changed myself through nutrition. And amazing things come from that. Amazing, unbelievable things come from it. I feel like a totally different person. And the first benefits that I, there's things I'd never want to lose again. I feel like my cognitive functioning is significantly enhanced. I can recall facts and information more quickly. My memory is better. I'm sharper. I'm calmer. I can, I can concentrate for longer periods of time. That's as a result of nutritional change. I feel like a more compassionate person. I feel like I've got a new purpose in life. And when I look at the figures, I look at the stuff from, you know, maybe Verta Health or some of the other pieces of research that suggest how many other people could reverse their condition and get their life back and rediscover the joy of waking up every day. Uh, I feel that's my new mission in life. And the research suggests there could be two million type two diabetics who could rid themselves of their meds. And by the way, could significantly reduce the 10% we spent of the NHS budget, the 10 billion pounds a year uh, that we spend on treating type two diabetes before you even add all the other symptoms of metabolic syndrome and dementia, early, early onset dementia, which I think has got to be related to the amount of sugar in our diet. Now, occasionally, having gone through this personal transformation and feeling like I want other people to share in the joy of life, you can get irritated. You can get irritated when you see kids eating, drinking cans of Coca-Cola and you see that they, we are poisoning our children with the products we are putting into them. Mm. And if there are people, you know, I know the voluntary sector people are probably here tonight, and I never mean this disparagingly. What I've sort of discovered as I'm trying to network in to the kind of uh, the system uh, is the demands that people are making on the government are almost incremental uh, when what we actually need is a massive step change, paradigm shift in thinking. You know, from how we regulate our advertising and our food production to how we legislate, to ta and, legislate and tax, uh, to how we educate, to how we teach our children. Uh, it absolutely requires ma a massive step change. And why I think tonight is particularly important is I know that our speakers are challenging the orthodoxies at the very heart of public policy when it comes to not just treatment of type 2 but the way people live their lives and they get healthy uh, and I, you know I can't claim to be an expert uh, okay I, I'm an obsessive amateur parliamentary biohacker <laughs> who tries to measure everything now and supplement with things and get healthy and run and lift and ride bikes and wake up and put my face up to the sun and realize what a glorious day it is. But I'm not an expert. Uh, and, and that's why I think that policymakers need to be exposed to Zoe and Asim and Trudy and <coughs> others in the room. Because I do think we need challenge. Uh, I don't want us to default to the status quo. Because people are doing it for themselves. Now, something is going on. But I, I cannot feel this good. If I cannot feel this good, without breaking the guidelines my own government give me. Uh, you know, that's a bit strange, isn't it? Uh, and so I want to tease this out. I want to tease it out because I just think the productive capacity of this nation, the collective well-being of this nation, could be significantly enhanced if we can change the lives of 2 million people with type 2 diabetes. If there's a mission in politics, 
My God, that's a great mission, isn't it? Indeed. And you're here tonight because you're part of that. You want to change <coughs> things significantly. You've probably turned your own lives around in some way, or you've helped people turn their lives around. And all of you have got a big part to play in that. And that's why I'm so pleased you've come. And that's why this is genuinely the best meeting of the week for me. And I hope it's only the start of a journey for significant public policy change. Thank you.